Hi, how are you? Welcome back to the show. This is Y254 Channel, in particular, Y in the Morning. Now, I don't know if you know, but we just had a very interesting conversation with Stephanie Ayeta on mental health. And I will small borrow from that in my first introduction. But before we get any further, do you know how to interact with us? At Y254 on Facebook, Y254 Channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on the gram. Hashtag of the day is Y in the Morning. I think it's a very beautiful day to be alive. Very good day to be six feet above the ground. Do you agree? All right. I like that. <laughs> Let's interact. But before we continue, I want my guests to introduce themselves and then we get into the meat of the conversation. Mbona ikwangi mboga though? Why is it meat? Maybe they know. Hi. Hi. How are you? Do you know? Hi. Yeah. The high was for everyone. Let's do this again. Yeah, Take two. Look in this direction. You looked there. So that was his high. Ah! Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I have corrected myself. All right. Hi. Hello. How are you? Very good. Maybe let's start with you. I yeah. like your hair. Thank you. I grew it myself. Uh, mm. Very proud of you. You clearly do it's a good job. Years, years of practice. I can see you're yes. doing a very, very good job. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone who's saying from my team, very mm -hmm. able team, they like everything about you. So ah. you might have to have several conversations after this, sign some <laughs> autographs <laughs> and all. Hey, now me check a sign up, baby. Please introduce yourself to the people. Uh, my name is Kifue, mm -hmm. uh, Kifue Karita. I am a, a storyteller at heart, but I do a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I was the director for The Rough. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's very brief, but he does a lot of amazing things, which we will get mm -hmm. into in a little bit. And who are you, sir? Uh, I go by the name Tom Payne, mm -hmm. um, a singer, a creative, and um, season one, the rough winner. I'm so humbled by it, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think I, I just love the idea of reinvention for me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's everything for me. So whenever you talk about reinvention, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We'll get to what reinvention means to you. But yeah. before we continue, I want us to borrow a leaf from the conversation that was just happening with, again, Stephanie Ayeta. So it was based on mental health. And in the, in the Beningi, when we're having a conversation as three hosts in the introduction, Brian Sakwa 101 at Stephanie Ayeta, Brian asked us how we maintain mental health balance what do you do for you to make sure you're, you're okay and not just okay that we can see oh they look good oh you know are you truly okay can you be in your own personal space by yourself can you stand the, the sound of your own voice in your head what do you do for you why look at mm -hmm. each other yeah, <laughs> you know as a very kind gentleman uh -huh. I, I insist on letting others go first, but because you want to look like you want to gather your yeah. thoughts, I would be even kinder oh, as a gentleman. Yeah. No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to clap for him, even. Uh -huh. um, how do I maintain, or rather, how do I balance out mental health for mm. myself? Um, it's a journey mm. because they, you can't really say that you will ever, at any point of life, have it figured out. Uh, it's just that consistent balance of, okay, today morning I woke up and I did not feel like leaving the vicinity of my bed. Uh, other days I'm like, I'm ready to capture the moon. The thing is to always be genuine with at least yourself. Mm -hmm. You can put on a brave face for the rest of the world, but you need to, at the bare minimum, be able to understand where you are at each day. Mm -hmm. Because that way you... You can't, take, you can't deal with a problem if you don't acknowledge the problem. So I would say, for me, what I try to do as much as possible is acknowledge I am okay or I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. That would be the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. I'm about to spam you with content, but... Yeah, yeah, I think you just said it all. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, for, for me, I think uh, the concept is uh, showing yourself more grace. Mm -hmm. We talk about grace and... We talk about um, showing people grace, but we never talk about showing ourselves grace. Mm -hmm. When we fall short, when we uh, miss the mark, I feel um, most of the times we're depressed because of one factor. Either we feel we're not good enough, either we feel maybe um, we failed to attain some standard, which we feel like we should attain. But in my opinion, I think um, a 
apart from just showing yourself love, um, are the good times and things are really working for you. I, I feel like you need to be also able to show yourself love and grace even when you fall short, mm -hmm. even when you're not at your best, you know. You need to be gracious enough to just um, give yourself room to, to grow and to learn from the mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, that we make in life. So whether um, this morning you woke up and you feel like you're not in the mood, as he says, I feel like you need to show yourself grace and you need to be able to just love yourself too much to understand that you're just human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Um, <laughs> You're supposed to cry. <laughs> You're just supposed to, yeah. So how do you, and especially in a competitive arena like the rough, how did that work out for you? Well, um, as the rough winner. He's very interested yes, in the answer. Yes, yeah. as the rough winner, <laughs> as you like to remind us. <laughs> that is, is really too much. Like winning, because you know clearly like the spotlight hits you. And then that's when you wake up and you realize, okay, everyone is looking up to me. That's when you get back home and then you get those type of messages like, hey, uh, you really inspire me. Hey, you know, You're uh, my role model. Yeah, I need you as a coach. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm still children. Yeah, you know, I'm still growing in this thing. But it's too much pressure. Mm -hmm. But how I, how I usually handle it is I, I, I think there's always two sides of the coin. I believe there's always two sides. So it, it depends on how you're, you're going to look at the whole situation. Mm -hmm. So you're going to look at it from a positive angle or a negative one. Mm -hmm. So me being me, I always choose the positive side of everything. Mm -hmm. Even when um, things don't make sense, mm -hmm. I try to make sense out of everything, you know. So even as a man, you know, like things are tough, but I'm like, you know, uh -huh. it's okay to cry. It's okay, but I'm not going to cry, you know. I'm going to do it alone. I'm not going to do it. Do you imagine that we don't cry either? Anyway, this, this might continue for some time now. Okay, for maybe, let me tell you a secret. There is, and I'm going to say it out loud because I just think it in my head, but I never take it out from my mental space. Yeah. There is there's an award uh, or, I don't know, they win awards. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to, English is not, is failing me small, kidogo. Mm -hmm. but the, the point is, <laughs> the winners win awards, but the organizers don't ever really get the kind of love mm -hmm. that, for example, Tom Payne is, is Tom Payne now, you know, <laughs> yes. he's the winner of the, mm -hmm. but where is the love for the people who came together and, mm -hmm. and created this space for Tom Payne to come audition in and actually thrive? There's a whole team, so there's this FEMA Awards, and mm. everyone is always clapping hands for FEMA award winners. Yeah. But I get so upset because Nick, the president, is the CEO, president of the actual <laughs> FEMA awards, and yeah. he's hardly ever recognized, and that annoys me a little bit. Uh -huh. Does it annoy you? As um, so I'll, I'll, I'll possibly give the example that a photographer would give. It's my pleasure is in taking the photo, not being in the photo. And perhaps sometimes as an organizer, that's the best mentality to have when you're preparing something. Don't you my want joy, flowers? My joy in making the rough was not being recognized or being in the credits or all of that. It was being on the journey that allowed these guys to shine. Because my desire while going through the rough wasn't, okay, now this is going to secure for me 15 other jobs where people will recognize me and I'll continue to shine and my Twitter will blow up anything like that it was i want to put together a show that people will enjoy as they watch and the participants who get to be on it will be able to get a platform to grow and hone and further their craft i don't like the limelight per se uh, because i'm i can i can survive on you i can thrive in a girl don't you look at my ladder i can thrive in it i can do my thing in the limelight but my my thing with this project or like when you're an organizer if you want the limelight then you will create you're the organizer there'll be a segment where let us bring on board mukubwa who has done this fantastic thing mm -hmm. you organized it you but if it's genuinely for the people who are watching and who are participating mm -hmm. then enjoy that part for what it is mm -hmm. yeah okay now to maybe cross your journeys 
when you saw him auditioning for the first time, did you imagine or did, did you see him winning it? Did you see, not look at now, Tom, he's very <laughs> interested as well. <laughs> so uh, Tom, he has the same look. This, this one yeah. is for you, yeah. uh, upon request. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't care. <laughs> And I don't know if that sounds bad, uh, um, but we've had conversations with Tom through the journey. And any time we talk, I'd tell him, whether you win or not is never going to be the point of this. Yeah. It's always going to be going any stage that you get on. Do your best when you're on that stage. Yeah. Kill it when you're on that stage. And live that stage without any regrets. Yeah. So, and that's what I told to any participant who asked me throughout the process. Start on for, did you make it just to the auditions or did you make it to the semifinals? Doesn't matter what level you made it at. Did, if you did your best, no one can hold that against you. And that should be enough for you to grow from where you are at now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did I know that he was going to win? I had no idea, but I wasn't focused on who was going to win. I was just there for how can I help these guys bring out their, mm -hmm. their best? Mm -hmm. And I am aware that the tagline kind of that is attached to the rough mm. is finding talent and inspiring passion. Yes. Why that particular phrase? Um, so we started it, the project started out with a gist of there's a lot of talent across the nation. And primarily the target was in the youth, 18 to 24. But a lot of that is essentially pushed down to, uh, you do that one later, you first focus on going through school, getting your degree, getting an like 8 to 5 job. Mm -hmm. I know, I know the struggle, I've been in it. So the, I want, the identify talent was mm -hmm. to help people identify that thing within them uh, and put a caprice pool to tease them to be like you could win so mm -hmm. why don't you try this thing that you're interested in and the inspire passion was the spiritual element of it mm -hmm. and the talent element of it so inspire people's passion to pursue what they have within them and their relationship with the heavenly father Please. is it solely christian content let me phrase it like that yes yes the show so the show was based on christian principles so it's not that it was only christian talent but uh, <laughs> no it wasn't only christian talent but it was designed with that element of inspiring the christian element mm -hmm. or the spiritual uh, pursuit how do you where do you fall in that tom would you say that, yes, you're a Christian and you only make Christian calls? to a gospel. And, and what it, there's a kind of pressure for, honestly, for gospel artists, I feel. Because there's no society, we don't give them room to make mistakes. So if something that, if a mistake is made by a gospel artist and someone else makes the same mistake who is not in the, that ca, ca bracket, it's, it's such a big deal. It's news. <laughs> See, we, we've posted everywhere. Now we are shaming this person, forgetting that Christian. Christians, yeah. the point is, first of all, love your neighbor as you love yourself and forgiveness. Forgiveness and mercy. Yeah, his grace is new every morning. Ama ni mekose ni Bible yangu ntofauti ama ni kosa. Yeah. So where do you fall in that? Um, number one, I'll start from um, my art or how I approach music. I approach it from a point of authenticity so if my art is not authentic number one it's going to be terrible if my performance is not authentic it's going to be terrible again so um uh, where i fall in the category um um as the rough was spiritual or probably christian centered is that i number one born and raised in a christian family i won't deny that so uh, already while I was born, I believe I was taken to church even without knowing what church was, what, who God was. I was a kid, but I was already in church. And then I grew up in Sunday school. So um, the word Jesus or the name Jesus, which I really do respect a lot, was not strange to my ears. But you know, like growing up, that's when I discovered, okay, so being a Christian means this and this and this. And now, okay, as I'm growing older. Mm -hmm. So I feel it would be a sin and it would not be okay if I share aspects of my life because mm -hmm. I believe I tell stories through the music 
for me. I tell you about how I fell in love through a song, and I don't tell you about my relationship with God again through a song. Because mm -hmm. I, I really want to be authentic as far as the music is concerned. So um, being in a space where the competition was Christian-centered, it was an opportunity to, to show people something they've never seen before, which is now the religious side of me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a religious person, I'm a Christian. So it, it was just an opportunity for me to just show you like a side of me, to open up my religious side, you know? Because mm -hmm. there are friends who know me, but they don't know my g gospel songs. They just know probably that Kawan love song that I sang somewhere in the lake. That's the thing, you know? <laughs> But mm -hmm. I decided to open this page, like, I'm also spiritual. Mm -hmm. I pray, you know, and some, uh, there is a superior being I believe, I believe in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was just a, a platform for me to also just um, respect and honor God for who he is and whom probably he has been, like, in my life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad, like, I'm glad I was part of it and... I just fall in that category of authentic people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never lie in my songs. Even if I sing about how I robbed somewhere, trust me, I did. You robbed someone? No, no, there's, there's <laughs> no song talking about just, that. Just checking, yeah. just checking, okay. Right, for if I... See now, the problem is we had this conversation. Mm -hmm. you might attend. Yeah, yeah. Nivile and bear chai, but he, he made promises to do so. <laughs> anyway, we had this conversation, and I want to say it out loud so that we're all on the same page. Do you feel it's a bit cliche that all these um, auditions and things and winners are, are targeted to one form of art? Like it's always some singer who's winning. Or if it's a dancer, it's, it has to be a dance competition. Yeah. Or if it's a spoken word type situation, it has to be very specific. But when it's broad, mm. we kind of fall on the singers. I don't know if they woo us in some type of way that the rest don't. Um. Music has a benefit uh, that I do acknowledge. Uh, many of us will easily fall towards. Uh, if a dude says, I love you, you'll be like, ah, oh, thanks, that's sweet. But he comes, I, I won't attempt to sing, but I will. <laughs> I love you. You're like, oh, he loves me. <laughs> There's a certain um, thing that music can do mm -hmm. that just happens across the board. But music, like any other art, um, is multi-layered. Mm -hmm. And there are many layers that, because music has been very marketed, I don't know if that's the right word, but accessible, mm -hmm. that has been peeled. So it's quite easy for people to pick up on those ones. But for others like dance or spoken word or art, those ones haven't really hit the public eye mm -hmm. as much. So sometimes it's harder to appreciate art or sometimes harder to appreciate dance because those aren't things that we frequently see or frequently interact with. Uh, everyone has their favorite song, but not everyone has their favorite dance crew or mm -hmm. their favorite artist. Mm -hmm. So I understand that bias, I understand the cliche, but I do wish or do desire for that continued appreciation for different forms of art from theater to breakdance, beatbox, just there's so much beauty in what is available to us. So I do see the cliche, mm -hmm. but I fight it. I want to see a ventriloquist. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I you, can't just be seeing these You won't movies. see them, you'll hear them though. <laughs> <laughs> so you're punny now. <laughs> yes, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite uh, I pun intended. I will get to you shortly. <laughs> Now you see, I've even forgotten, almost forgotten my question. Anyway, let me reboot my mind. At Y254, Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on the gram. Hashtag of the day is Y in the morning. Tom, have you ever been told, why are you singing? It's, it's, you're wasting your time. Can you go to school? Like Kifoy was, was mentioning, that we, I am not, first of all, as young as I look. I keep telling you. So when I was growing up, there was no room for... Nurturing talent was something that we were going to do after we are working. As in the, of importance was going to school and not just going to school, working hard in school. And after you've done working hard in school, graduates. No, don't talk to boys. <laughs> There's yeah. no time to talk to boys. <laughs> and then you get a job and then you make a lot of money. And then suddenly the boys are en entering into the conversation and you ask, you're being asked why you don't have a family yet. 
but art was never there. Yeah. So is it the same for you? And also, on the same, do you feel a certain kind of pressure to brand yourself in a way? Like Lazima Ukona Va Bling, earrings. Is your hair like the way it is because you have to wear it the way? Um, okay, can I, start with, can I start off with my hair? I really love my hair. Yeah? Yeah, like I do. So, um, I'll be honest, I don't want to lie. So, um, you know, I was having this afro, but I was getting tired of meeting every single guy that I say hi to, they have the same, same afro. Side-eyed, I'm side-eyed before a bit. Nah, no, I, I, no, I no really feelings, Scott. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm generic, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I really believe in honesty, so I'd rather not lie, you know. <laughs> so let me just be as honest I as like possible. So uh -huh. I, I, I just got tired of meeting everyone and then introducing themselves, and I'm like, your head is just as boxed as mine. Wow. <laughs> and I, I got tired, you know. And so uh, at one point, a friend just su su suggested to me, like, why don't you just do something, do dreads? And I was like, no, I don't like dreads. Are I was you like, Christian? <gasps> yeah, I was uh -huh. like, no, I don't like dreads. So my friend was like, so what do you want to do with your hair? And I was like, I'll think of something. So I decided I'm just going to go all natural with my hair, but just do something with it. Mm -hmm. So if tomorrow I, I just decide to undo it again and maybe do something different with it, like I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So that's with my hair. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the question was... Um, branding, sort of, branding. yourself. Um, no, I don't have issues with that, and I don't feel the pressure to dress in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I, j I just feel free to be who, who I am, you know. I'm, I'm so comfortable in how I dress. And uh, besides that, I love music. Mm. I don't love the things that come along with it. Mm. You know, like, um, I love fashion, yes, but that's not where my heart is. My heart is elsewhere. My, my heart is in the art itself. Mm -hmm. My joy and my fulfillment comes from creating and um, just doing something better than the way like I've been doing them. Mm -hmm. But my joy does not come in putting on some Gucci or some, mm -hmm. it's, it's none of my concern. My concern is, is the music good? Mm -hmm. That's my issue. Is my, are my lyrics on point? Am I growing? Like that is my concern. Mm -hmm. Cause um, I, I think my, I'm, I'm kind of looking this way. But I know probably with art and with music, I have to look both ways. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, I think I'm probably going to give it like a 30, 70. Like on the fashion thing, I'm going to go 30. But on the music side and uh, um, on the skill level, like I'm going to go and put 70% effort on this side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because after all is said and done, I want my music to just speak for itself. Mm -hmm. I don't want you liking me because of a nice jacket. No, mm -hmm. I want you to like me because you like the music. Mm -hmm. I want you to fall in love with the music. Because mm -hmm. that way, like, I have you hooked, like, for the rest of your life. But with fashion, it changes with time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the last question was, do you, do you feel that you are supported because of your art? Not just, you ha you're following a script, like, you must go to school, you must do this. And please, by the way, I, I started the show telling you that knowledge is very important and no one can take it away from you. They can say a lot of things, thick stones, all that, but knowledge... It's only the good Lord that can tell you, Ebu, come, come, show. Yeah. So are you in the, I want to say, <laughs> do you subscribe to the philosophy of school is great or do you just want to quit it altogether and just focus on your art? Where do you strike the balance? No, um, I'm going to answer that with the verse in the Bible. Um, if you read in Proverbs 1, the Bible said that wisdom is in the streets calling. But uh, if you read again on Proverbs, the Bible says that people are ignorant too to probably hear it, like they see it, they don't perceive it. So I don't want to like um, turn a blind eye on school. That would be the worst mistake ever. So number one, I'm going back to school, maybe this May or September. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of just um, advise people to really, really, really make intentional decisions and you plan out your life outside the normal, which is the normal in Kenya, every person at this particular age is supposed to be in campus, is supposed to be in high school. So I kind of just like decided to, how about I create my own thing? Mm -hmm. How about I just live my life under my own terms? 
which was a struggle with my parents because in, <laughs> in, in my dad's house you don't move like that mm -hmm. you move the way my brothers are moving mm -hmm. but i was i think i was hard-headed like i decided to just i was even sharing with uh, kifue and i was telling him i have my life i had my life like planned out mm -hmm. on my own so immediately after high school when my friends were joining campus, I decided I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. And my dad spoke to me and he's like, are you going back to school? I was like, no, I'm not. He was like, so what are you going to be doing? Are you looking for a job? I was like, no, I'm not. I already have a job. And I was like, so, yeah, so he was like, what job? <laughs> yeah, my dad was like, what job? I was like, I have a skill, I have a talent, and I'm really going to just dedicate four good years to just work on it. The same way like people go to campus for four years and work on their degrees. I'm taking four years. I'm going to work on my singing. I'm going to work on my rap. And by the time these people are coming out of school and they sing, when I sing, I'm just going to sing different. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tell there's been years of practice on this other end. Mm -hmm. So um, the hardest part is in making a decision and just like, like just sticking to it and sticking to the plan. Mm -hmm. When it rains, when the sun is really, really hot, mm -hmm. when you're going through this drought as a creative and still holding on and, and just hanging in there and being patient. Because my parents, like you can tell you, like they, I believe their tears were like, they couldn't believe it because it really does make sense. It's the money, isn't it? I bet. <laughs> I bet for it them. Helps. Yeah, Yeah, the money kind of <laughs> helps mm -hmm. to make them believe. Because mm -hmm. you know, like people need to see to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for them, it was like that. But for me, it was like kind of a wake up call for me to just be true to myself and to know that God honors that. Mm -hmm. Like when you're true to yourself and when you put in the work, he's going to reward that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God literally never lets any work go unrewarded. He's not a man. Like a man can literally overlook mm -hmm. some of the things that you do, but God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Like, so long as you put in the work, you mm -hmm. put in the time, and he sees it, I think he just honors it. Villa connections. Manze, because for me, I literally had none. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now I want us to stay on that line of school. I'll tell you a story. So, <laughs> the storyteller is, is very keen to hear my story. So, I interviewed uh, two girl, girl guides. Girl guides, yes, girl guides. So, they were part of an exchange program. They, they were in Kenya on... We did this last week. In fact, on International Women's Day, it happened to fall on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one was from Uganda and one was from Madagascar. First of all, though, Madagascar has never seen a boarding school in her life. Okay. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's not what we... boarding we're... school before they knew what school was. <laughs> 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 that also took me out. But the one from Uganda <coughs> surprised me a bit because, first of all, their system goes up until Form 6. It's, it's how it was before mm -hmm. 844 came and mm -hmm. did things, before CBC now came and did mm -hmm. more things. <laughs> so in their system, between, f I think, Form 5 and Form 6, they have an option to choose whether you're doing the arts or you're doing the sciences. Yeah. Now, what kind of... You, you tell me how you feel before I tell you how I feel. <laughs> so apparently, we were talking about looks and, and how it has any relation to, you know, brains. Because mm -hmm. can you be beautiful and be smart at the same time? So apparently society... <laughs> I, I know, it's, it's ridiculous that... It, <laughs> <laughs> I have... <laughs> 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 morning. But anyway, so the, the general gist of it when she was talking is that the arts were full of what we call beautiful people because they have more time to put effort so they they want to do the arts and in the sciences <laughs> it's not me who said it i promise you i'm i've seen very beautiful doctors and i think you know that particular field is disgustingly hard and very very long and tedious and also being a lawyer is not very easy. Mm -hmm. But you get it. Like yeah. If you're in the arts, first of all, you're, you're not that adept to brilliance. I'm trying to sugarcoat it as much. Blunt. Blunt. <laughs> I'm, trying. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make it, you know, sweet. Mm -hmm. at the, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about that as an artist? Do you feel robbed of... of like, why? Um, <laughs> why? I understand the bias that could happen mm -hmm. from that because often I, I do understand sometimes it's born out of a place of bile. Mm -hmm. So if you've, you know, gone through all these years of school 
and then Kim Kardashian is a billionaire. You, I can understand no when reason. you catch feelings. I understand when you catch feelings and you're like, oh, what are creatives? See, brains, mm. need, to, need to my looks. Mm. I get that um, uh, inherent bias that someone can have. But to lump everyone uh, in the entire category, not to say that Kim Kardashian is not brilliant, contrary to popular belief, the ability to take what they've gone through and turn it into a multi-billion industry. It's not easy. That's intelligence. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it's not the intelligence that has been valued by society. It's not the intelligence that of, oh, I went to school, I got a degree and I made money off that degree. That's a street smart. Mm -hmm. um, but again, so I, I understand the bias that people have towards when a creative uh, pursues that outside of the you know, the lawyer or the business degree, the accountant, mm -hmm. the doctor. But there is a special, a special, yes, Mekopalis, there's a special, no. Pick that up No, quick. let's keep moving, <laughs> keep pushing. There's a special intelligence that's as associated with creative. Mm -hmm. um, if you listen, for example, to Tom Paine's uh, lyrics, ask someone off the top of the mind to come up with that or someone uh, randomly from the streets, can you write something like that? It's not as easy as we uh, would like to say that it is. Mm -hmm. um, to create is its own form of intelligence and creativity is present in every, every career. Um, so I, I know that there's that bias, but I, I, I don't catch feelings because it's a bias born out of ignorance mm -hmm. and that that that's something that you can fight mm -hmm. yeah I, I have five minutes i don't want to finish come on anyway at white five on facebook white two five four channel on twitter hashtag is why in the morning if for example we put you on a pedestal and said tom Payne, you are from now on the uh, leader of boy children what would you like to tell the other boy children in terms of maybe pursuing their dreams in terms of not giving up especially when you said they don't under okay, I'd, I'd like to believe maybe perhaps you don't understand that creatives can get either a writer's block as a writer there's this yeah. sometimes it's it's not adding up something that you wake up and it just kind of pours out of you you even have to really fast write it down before you forget and and sometimes it's in abundance sometimes it's not there so how how do you keep pushing um should i give them my formula or maybe i should just think on what i've been reading or, or, or listening i think you should speak from your heart Authenticity. yeah Authenticity. oh i wish i had a dj i'd give so, you a drop right now um, <laughs> honestly how do i deal with that um I get mad. Mm. That's one. Mm -hmm. Like when I have no content, and um, or maybe when I'm writing things, and I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Is it no, no, no yeah. Sure. I do get mad, and it's okay to get mad as a creative. Like you need to, you need to. Um, how I deal with it is I, I hang in there. You don't have to wait for inspiration. Or it will never come. Mm -hmm. Never, never. So all you have to do is just hang in there and trust the process, you know. Or maybe sometimes when it's not coming, right about how the creativity is gone. So you counter it. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that pressure really comes from within us. Mm -hmm. Or maybe like when you haven't been writing for so long and then now you're back again to writing, like it has been for me, like I've been giving out more, I've been performing more. Now I'm back to a space now, I have to sit back and now create there's a lot of doubt, there's a lot of fear. When I'm writing my first line, I'm like, is this good enough? But what you need to do is just believe in that first bar that you just write, mm -hmm. that it's gonna lead you now to the next one. And then that one is gonna lead you now to the next one. And also, um, just giving out what you can offer as per the moment. Because it might not make sense to you, it might not be the best of you, but sometimes even the best of what you think is good, when you offer it to the people, they're like, no, and that which you think is the least when you give it to the people now they're like, yes, mm -hmm. now this is all you've been waiting for. So I feel like you need to offer to us all these things. I think as an artist, people think when you're weak and vulnerable, 
or when you show people like you're not at your best, it's not gonna work for you. Mm -hmm. But at sometimes it kind of works for you, because people get to like kind of relate to you more. So they don't look at you as a superhuman. You're a person. Yeah. yeah, you're just a person, you know. And yes, you do fall short. If you check my performances, like they weren't, I would say like my, mine, they were not like the perfect performances. But I think through the imperfections is how people just kind of relate to it. Because mm -hmm. now they feel like it's just like us. Mm -hmm. They're not looking for Superman. No, they're just looking for a man. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so through the tough process, just embrace it and just just walk through it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. when it rains it pours but it also it gets better this too shall pass yeah mm -hmm. i feel so good. wise right now <laughs> <laughs> oh my god too chill no go wild <laughs> <laughs> so part of our team before it kimaliza mm -hmm. we have a very very i want to say agile Mm -hmm. I don't, maybe it might not make sense in the context I'm putting it, but I do feel it's agility. Mm -hmm. they, they posed a couple of questions on our social media handles, yeah. and one of them is sitting right there, baby girl, Natalie, shout out. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions they asked, I think it was either this week or yesterday, yeah. or Tuesday, mm -hmm. yeah, yesterday, is how do you know when a, something you're pouring into, for example, a business or a, a venture, something that's supposed, an investment, something that's supposed to, make money mm -hmm. how do you know it's time to stop if it's not making you money is there like a timeline because I, I imagine the rough was not very easy to, to yeah. put together so did you ever once at one point just you know what i'm tired it's not coming together where when you're milita go find someone else i'm tired <laughs> is there a timeline that's a tough question because it assumes that we can perceive the unperceivable. Um, there's the example of Schrodinger's cat. Mm -hmm. When something is within the box. I like that I understood what you just said. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> when something is within the box, uh -huh. we always try to understand mm -hmm. uh, its state, even if we can't see it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how sometimes the entrepreneurship bubble is, where you do not know when this thing will pan out, when it will live or when it will die. But uh, there is that belief that hey, it's going to pan out at some point. So I do not actually have an answer whether there's a point uh, where when you're looking at the business itself, I'd say it has to do more with you. Mm -hmm. um, if you still have fire within you to keep pushing for it, keep pushing with it. If you have lost hope, it's possibly best to stop. Because even at that point, um, you will not be giving it your all. You will get bitter. You will begin to hate the project itself or the business itself. And you will not enjoy the journey for what it is. Um, I have a friend who pursued film for years and gave everything towards it. And then after 10 years, they're like, I don't enjoy this. I'm done. I'm going to go look for a desk job. Wow. And they have no regrets. Mm -hmm. They didn't leave that space being that and for. I wish I kept pushing for this. Mm -hmm. um, but they also that and for. I gave my all towards it. I've left there with no regrets. Mm -hmm. That perhaps would be the best way to approach it when you're thinking also in terms of your business. Have you given your all? Can you leave that space with no regrets knowing that you've done your best? Then leave uh, there. If you still feel like there's an element that you haven't tried out, mm -hmm. try it out so that... If you move forward, you do not leave uh, regrets behind. And if it works out, you're like, so I just needed to give it that extra edge. Mm -hmm. So is it in terms of business? No idea. For yourself, that's what I'd, uh, I'd say. Is there a pause button? Is it just black or white, play or stop? The you, can you can pause. You can pause? You can pause. I, I would fully agree with the element of taking a break. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, perhaps, so for case in point, me, who's a storyteller, uh, and who's fully interested in film, I have sold insurance. Mm -hmm. um, I have taken on desk jobs. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, while this wasn't paying out. I can't imagine you on a desk, but okay. Ah, I, I kill it. I sit <laughs> on that desk and I excel that document to death. <laughs> I put that word on it. I PowerPoint my way through the presentation. Wow. And 
I outlook like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you see what you did there. <laughs> All right, in conclusion, because time is running away from us, maybe could you tell us your social media handles, how we can find you if you have a new project coming on? Is the rough season two coming soon, perhaps, maybe? Are we I, I pray so. Yeah. I pray so. Uh -huh. um, I would uh, enjoy a, a, a second round of it, also because of learning from uh, different things, better ways to approach it, and yeah, we, I, you will, I will keep posted on that on my socials. Mm -hmm. Socials are D underscore fanatic, that's F-U-N-N-A-T-I-C, which means functional understanding, not necessary. Ooh. And that's essentially it. That's my Instagram, that's my Twitter, Facebook, Kifui Karita. Mm -hmm. mm. Tom Payne, as we are finishing, there's a very... I don't want to say dangerous kind of pressure, but there is for winners. Yeah. We're always looking ahead. So you won. Now yeah. what? What's next? Do you intend to <laughs> just let me not lead the witness? What next? As you give us also your show. Social, social, social media, social media handle. handles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> special. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next? Um, what's next for me? Um, I think I've been on the, on the move, like always. Like the wheel has always been turning. So immediately after the rough, I resumed. Like you kind of like press, pressed pause on, on one end <coughs> for the competition. So after it was done, like I, I immediately just took like a weekend off mm -hmm. and I was back. I was back to work. You don't want a break or anything to rest and Are we going to celebrate like after we really probably like, you know, get, get the better of this art thing. Because eh, I feel sorry. like a, lo a lot hasn't been done and I'm, and I'm young, like I'm in my 20s. So uh -huh. I think I, I want to do more and I want to do most. Yeah, we're going to take a break, you know, when I think the body's just going to tell me. It's going to signal me mm -hmm. at one point. It will, by the way. Yeah, it will. Please listen. Yeah, I will listen to mm -hmm. it. So um, what's next for me is um, I really want to put good music out there. There is good music, but I also want to be part of the people who are still pushing the same, same agenda. Mm -hmm. And um, shout out to every artist out there doing something for the good that um, is not selfish. Um, it's just for the good of the culture, the good of the people. Like, I really respect you and I really just want to be part of the movement, you know. So, yeah, I'm humbled by the win and just by an opportunity right now. Like, I have an excuse to not put music out, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, my social media handles, right? So, um, Instagram at Tom Payne underscore Kenya. Um, on all social media platforms, actually. Yeah, Tom Payne underscore Kenya. Yeah. You're brief. For artists, you guys are very brief. <coughs> All right. Do not go away at 55 on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter. Hashtag is Y in the morning. We are coming back with Brian Sakwa 101 on his socials with a very, very riveting conversation with a comedian. I hope ni cheke. Venya ni But no pressure. Thanks. <laughs> Stay Y.